Hello, I'm Sally and I'm a very passionate wedding photographer and I have discovered in my life how important it is to do what you love, which is what I'm now doing. And I have been privileged enough to be interviewed for the online prosperity show, so be sure to watch it. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the online prosperity show. And today we've got Sally. Sally, how are you doing, my love? Fantastic, thank you. Very well, thanks. Now, Sally has an intriguing story and Sally is the epitome and embodiment of what we all seek in life. Now, Sally has discovered her passion. Back in the time when Sally was staying at a cattle station, she raised her four kids all um, you know, um, around the Queensland um, area there. And now she has come across um, you know, daring to become a wedding photographer, a thing that she's been practicing for a while, and now she is prepared to share her passion and vision with the world. Thank you so much for your time today there, Sally. Now tell us a little bit about your story, um, the time you were back in Queensland and you were still trying to discover how to actually, um, you know, uh, figure out what your passion was. Well, I've done an enormous amount of personal development, but and I really saw when I was living in the outback and I, I loved it, it was an awesome life. And we lived there, I was born and bred there and lived there forever. But I always knew there was more, I always knew there was something more. And then we left, my husband and I and kids left there and moved away to try different things and we bought another business to make money. And very quickly I realised that it was like, it, I just wasn't, I wasn't passionate about it. It was it was hard slog. It was it was always hard work. And during all that time, I always had my camera. I was always taking photos. And I, when I was doing that, I loved it. But I never had the belief in me that I could be good enough to be a, a professional. But I realised that getting out of my own way and doing that was going to be amazing for my kids to see me doing that because ultimately they are the most important thing in my life and ultimately me being my best is going to give them permission to do that for themselves. So that's what actually really in the end had me take it on and, and become really good at being a photographer so that I could build a business and do what I love. It's just so important. It's everything. Understandable. So what, what sort of work were you doing um, while you were in, 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 in the art back there in Queensland? We had a cattle station, that's what we did. We had beef cattle and like my work was always, I did all the work, you know, the admin and bookkeeping and I was a mum of four kids. So of course that was a busy life. And then when we left there, we bought an importing company, importing from Taiwan. And I worked in that as well, but I never really, I, it was always like, I didn't enjoy it at all. It was always, I had to force myself to go to work every day. And since we're now getting out of that and, and giving all of myself to what I really love, it's very different. It's, it's just so different. Great stuff. So at yeah. the cattle station there, is there anything that would have triggered, um, you know, a moment where you would have just had to bring out the camera and maybe take pictures of the cows while they were feeding or were there any spurts of that while you were there or was it just strictly work? No, no, it was always, it was, it wasn't work. My, photography then the number one thing was my having kids because I wanted to photograph them my kids but also it's an amazing place the outback I mean the, the, it's it's a bit of a cliche but the wide open spaces are you can't help but want to photograph it I've got a 500 million photos of the sky you know it's, it's very conducive to any creative person to want to be creative in that in that living in that place so it was both those things but everything, I just photographed everything. Great. I was constantly playing with my camera. <laughs> Great. And, you know, they'd be out mustering, you know, they'd have 2,000 head of cattle and I'd be, you know, roaring down the side in the Toyota with my camera and saying, well, you've got to pull up and I'd, I'd be forever interfering with the mustering because I was trying to take photos of them. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Understandable. That's, that's that, you know, those are the roots of where passion really comes from. If you can actually yes. do it while you're still doing something else. So were you motivated by 
um, either people around you or did you get any support um, either from partners, the, the kids or friends, you know, when you started, you know, pulling out your camera and showing them your hobby by that time? Well, I, people always enjoyed my photos, but it was really something that built from inside of me. And, and it, it, honestly, it came with my self-belief. The minute I made a decision as I'm going to put my limiting, self-limiting conversations about myself, I'm going to suspend that. It was then that I really took it on. It was, came from inside of me, really, more than outside of me. Great. Now, now that you are you know, doing it full time, would you still do it even if you were not being paid for it? Oh, without question. Day and night, yes. Great stuff. Now, what is it about photography that actually draws you in, that brings out that sparkle or smile on your face every time you are behind the camera? It's, there's this amazing, a camera gives you an incredible scope of, to be creative. There's so much you can do with that one little piece of machinery and that's really inspiring. But, you know, I think more than anything, it's being able to share my images with people. I love giving someone a really amazing photo that they love. There's something really rewarding about that. Right. That's... Yeah, it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's a way to make a difference. Great. So what sort of feedback are you getting now from the work that you're creating for, you know, especially in the wedding sector? People would have planned and prepared for days and years for that special day. What sort of feedback are people telling you about your work now? A big one is that people love the, I'm very, my, my images are very candid and, People love that I capture those moments, and, and a lot of often they say to me things like, "You did, you created images that we love that we didn't know we were going to love." That, like, I just have a way with having people feel very comfortable, and I capture them. It's I'm very good with people, so that of course is a wonderful attribute to have when you're you know, you're needing them to just relax and be them. You don't need them to be anything but them. And I'm good at bringing that out in people. So people always, the feedback's often that, that they love that the photos are them. They're very, they connect with their photos. Great stuff. Because obviously a wedding day is one of those days that people plan for quite a while and they really yes. want to, you know, preserve those memories. And if you're really good with them, you're actually enhancing that experience, um, you know, with them. Would you think that um, your love for people is also what drew you towards your now passion in photography? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, there's something very fulfilling about, being around and that's another thing i love about weddings is that p families put a lot of you know a lot of their stuff to the side on a wedding day and families really come together so when you're around that and making a difference to people in that situation it's you know it, you really are reminded all the time of how wonderful humans are when they're being the best they can be so yeah my love for people is very strong good very strong yeah. As a as a wedding photographer, what's your opinion on those people that just take random photos and you know during the ceremony, um, relatives especially that you know might just go in front of the camera? What do you think of people like that, and how do you deal with them? Oh, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I, I people love weddings, and they get they the, everyone wants to capture their own little special snap. And I, I just deal with it. I mean, if they get in my way, I just give them a moment and then they move on. And no, it doesn't bother me. I just manage it. Great. Now, would you, when taking those photos with your, um, I mean, say it's a wedding, do you like directing the bride and groom or do you let them do what feels natural to them so that they get the best of the photo that comes out? It really varies. It, it, if, if there's a situation where it's flowing and, I, and they're connecting with each other and you can definitely get a sense of the vibe. And if it's 
if the vibe is really great, I don't interfere at all. But if, if they're feeling awkward and thinking, oh, I don't know what to do now, I'll just very, very casually direct them in a way that has them relax again. So it really does depend on the moment. It depends on who's around. Often if there's family around, they're, they're more inclined to be um, awkward. So I, do, I tend to direct more then. But it really does, it just plays out. Great. So when mm. people are, you know, already, does your session just end at the ceremony or do you go on and continue with the party with them or how, how does your process work? I'm off on the last to bed. I, I, I catch everything from this, depending on what they want from their photographer, I'll be there the day before and I'll keep going till the day after and I'm, just, and I'll get all the party all night and then the next day and because that's what, you know, that's one of the things is at my wedding that I don't have very good photos and I, I really want everyone to have those awesome photos that I didn't get. It's like I'm really committed to that. I'm like, I'm a bit obsessed with brides getting, you know, <laughs> I just love doing all this, you know, having lots and lots of really awesome photos that they can keep forever. It's really, it's awesome. So yeah, I'm there all night. I stay all night and get in the party and it's good fun. Great. I can totally tell that this is your thing and this is actually your element. Now, Sully, maybe some um, person in our audience right now is probably getting ready, um, you know, to get their wedding on or they might have a few questions that they need to ask you before they maybe engage yet another um, photographer. How can people get a hold of you? Oh, well, I have Instagram, Sally in Photographics, or I have a uh, an email, Sally at Sally M Photographics, or Facebook, Sally M Photographics. Very yeah. well. Very, Very well easy to find me. <laughs> Great stuff. That's how we found you too. Now, one word for the road, you know, just um, a word of advice or caution when people are out there searching for a photographer or something that you can advise the brides to be, to have a lookout for when, you know, they want to engage a photographer. What 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 will be one piece of advice you can give um, people that are getting ready for their big day? Yeah, it is a really really important day, and it's so important, particularly the bride. I mean, the groom he'll just come along and do what he's told, pretty much by the bride for that you know that part of it. <laughs> it's really important for the bride to feel connected to their photographer because it's surprising the difference it makes. So if you don't, if you Find some photographers that you think I'm going to go and see them and, you know, decide which one. Definitely go with that feeling. It's really important because everything else will flow. If you, if you connect, it'll flow. If you don't, it could end up like being difficult and you won't get the photos you want. Yeah understandable well thank you so much for your time and the viewers in there you would know that we are on a mission to make sure that you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable and i really hope that sally's story has inspired you to actually really go out there for something that lights you up and something yes. that you're really really passionate about because there's no point in you flogging a dead horse or trying to move um, you know, your life in a direction that is not satisfying you or even making you happy because everybody does deserve a happier existence. So um, if you then um, are happy one day and you do decide to get a photographer for your wedding, people like Sally are always around to give you advice and tips on how to do it so that you have a memorable day and she can also share her passion and give you tips and tricks on how to actually be, do, and have a happier existence. Thank you so much, Sally, for your time, your expertise, and sharing your passion story with us today. It's my pleasure. And I just want to end with my most favorite quote by Jim Carrey, which is, you can fail at doing what you don't love, so why wouldn't you have a go at doing what you do love? Absolutely, exactly. Some people would go on for years and years laboring and they still don't love it and they they get fired at the end of the day. But, you know. Exactly, <laughs> yes. Don't risk it. Don't do it. Great stuff. Sally, thank you so much for your time today. Good on you, Prosper. Thanks, mate. Fantastic. Great.